Great. Well, I'm as you were like, let's let's have these fast meetings these days. <laughs> um, but I'm also a little bit, um, yeah, we were supposed to have, a this meeting next a week from today. Um, and so, um, yeah, hoping we can spend a bunch of this time on the committee meeting script and then, um, also for Lauren, for other business, um, for the do, 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 um, why can't I find what I'm looking for? The equity um, impact worksheet. So that sounds good. Yeah. Um, so let's get started. Okay. <laughs> so, okay. So uh, review and approve agenda. We can't do public comment. Uh, no one's here. Um, I'm going to let's maybe skip over self-education learning roundtable and can do that more uh, in depth next time. Any report backs from city committees? Uh, and then, so just creative discourse survey results, um, just real quick. So we've gotten way more than we were in, we were hoping for. So we got like 340 some um, survey results, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. And our goal was to have 30. Um, and so at almost 350 is awesome. We um, also wanted to get 10% from BIPOC residents and, um, we uh, were at 9% and um, Creative Discourses feels great about that. They're like, that's totally in line with like demographics. And I think the, the big, they had two major concerns. One was that, you know, we had expressed interest of like the new American population in Montpelier, um, wanting to make sure that we got things translated and, and things like that. And based on the, the, we didn't have a question saying, you know, like, are you a, you know, new American or, you know, what's your status essentially, but there, there were no obvious markers that there, you know, folks um, of that demographic filled out this survey um, and did not participate in the, in the, um, in the, in the focus groups. And so that was one of their concerns. And then the other concern that they raised was that over 50% of the people who filled out this survey have a, like, a master's degree or more mm -hmm. and that we were like they're like is that on par and I was like I think so <laughs> you know like I think that resonates for me <laughs> and so like but from my experience in Montpelier um and so we looked it up and demographically Montpelier is about twice the Vermont average of people with master's degrees or higher mm -hmm. um, about like 35 percent, I make, I can't remember quite the numbers, but it was like 30s percent something percent to like 15 something percent. Um, and so, and it makes sense that people filling out the survey are, you know, you know, are folks with um, those higher um, uh, economic or higher, um, you know, education markers. And so um, we, so Cameron and I were saying, we said basically like, seems fine to keep moving forward with this survey for that reason. And for the new Americans, like we were basically like, I think we just need to just like keep move, like keep moving forward with this and just flagging that as something that we want to be intentional about moving forward. And like that's that's notable in of itself that no one filled out the survey or participated in focus groups, you know. Um, and so while there's you know such a huge percentage of English language learners like in the elementary school and stuff, so um, that in of itself is is data. So those are really the two main things. So they're going to spend a couple of weeks getting stuff back to us. They're going to send us a draft to review on May 24th, which is a Monday. And then Keisha will come, I think it's Keisha, maybe it's Keisha and Sue, I can't remember, for some of our uh, Wednesday meeting on May 26th to uh, hear any feedback or like share questions or concerns and to be able to kind of give the final thumbs up um, before finalizing that report uh, by June 1st. So how does that sound? Mm -hmm. Did, um, I did just our camera and mine's, oh, go ahead, sorry. I just realized we don't have Michael, so I'm, I'm trying to kind of quickly backtrack with some notes. <laughs> oh, good <Thank> job. You. <laughs> <laughs> This is why we should actually look at our agenda, which has yeah. prompts us to do all of these things. And, you know, And so do, does that sound okay that we're, you know, still planning on moving forward, not like trying to get more um, 
survey results, things like that. Okay. Yeah. Great. That's great. The numbers came in. Like last yeah. time we met, we were like not sure if we were going to hit our targets and stuff. So. Yeah. Go us. Look at us getting it out there. Lots of hard work. So thank you. Yeah. Thanks for all you're doing. It's great. Awesome. And so then I think nothing in fundraising and recruitment. Um, Helen reached out saying someone she knew, I can't remember who, had applied and hadn't heard back. And I'm just going to assume that that's because Cameron's out sick and we'll circle back to that soon. So, mm -hmm. hmm. or do you yeah, have any more? Like, applications on tonight's city council agenda for other committees, though. I wonder if there are. Yeah. Okay, uh, let me circle back to her. Yeah, and like sometimes those they'll add last minute, so we could probably even get it on tonight's agenda if mm -hmm. if it just slipped through the crap somehow. Great. I will circle back with her. Cool. Okay, committee chair meeting discussion. Uh, should I share my screen? Is that how we should do this or? For yeah, the I script? think that's probably, probably the way to go. And this is a little bit goofy because Jeremy and I just met about this. So Lauren, we're really going to lean on you yeah. for your thoughts <laughs> and feedback. <laughs> I'm not just saying it out loud. You realize things. <laughs> yeah. So um, we have, I'm using my personal Zoom for it and it's on the agenda, but so far zero people have RSVP'd, which is a little, I just, I think that tells me that the email has not been sent out yet. And so it's like officially warned and it's like, you know, so it's officially on the website. Um, mm -hmm. But I like Mary, so Mary did all of that, but I don't think Mary has like sent it out to committee chairs. And so, Lauren, is Mary the right person to follow up with? Yeah, I would think so. Great. Yeah, and so using mine, we're having people register just so we can get a count of how many people are <laughs> planning on joining mm -hmm. um, and planning a little bit around that. Um, but yeah, we can have breakout rooms. We can have up to 300 participants. Um, it is like an officially open and warned meeting so people can come who are not um, committee chairs or committee members, um, tis what it is. Do you have a plan if, if it didn't go out and attendance is low, like yeah, I think it's a week away a now. Number of people or something. What do you think, Jeremy? If we have like, well, it, it seems like there's a real question as to whether invitations were sent. So I think we need to find that out first. Um, judging that there's no RSVPs, um, that probably means the invite hasn't been sent. Um, I mean- Or I, that there is not a practice of RSVPing and yeah, so not sure. Yeah, yeah. but you're right. But I think we said, please. Like one or two would be like, Okay, that makes sense. But zero, that's yeah. So, um, yeah, I don't. I don't know what the protocol is since it's already been warned. But it, it seems like we should. It seems like we should try to get some conf confirmations before we attempt it. But and if we get fewer than five, ten people on the call. We just say, thanks so much for coming. See you later. <laughs> We're going to yeah. have this again. Yeah. I think it's fine to move a warned meeting mm -hmm. and like okay. have the city, especially mm -hmm. if they're out, if it's just not on the calendar then and like, mm -hmm. like it's on the calendar a different date. I think it would be okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you could still get some RSVPs if it just hasn't gone out and a week away but, yeah yeah um, or if it did go out like 
how how is the email written and right. who sent it and like is there some mm -hmm. thing that was uninviting about it or yeah not inspiring people to sign up yeah maybe i'll reach out to mary and then maybe i'll also just like manually go through the committee you know make a spreadsheet of emails and try to send some like personalized invitations too Mm -hmm. if possible you know if i can yeah get their emails yeah. and stuff <clears throat> okay um yeah and then planning to report it and um i don't yeah jeremy do you want to walk through the agenda or is there yeah sure um so, okay, Lauren, um, I think the, the approach here was fairly light um, and, and straightforward in terms of its focus. So um, just to like set up before the kind of specific agenda, um, we saw like three major goals with this. So one is just to inform the other city committees about CJAC, you know, what the committee is, its mission, um, how it functions and some of the work that's done to date. The second goal is to really start sharing some information and perspectives on ongoing equity and justice issues that other city committees face whether they've thought about it or not um and and then the third thing which is a bit more of a question mark is kind of making the offering to these other committees that cjack can be a resource uh on helping them navigate some of these equity and justice issues um, so that's the basic goals here um uh so then getting into the agenda um, start off with a really quick welcome and introductions, review the goals, set expectations around the agenda, um, as well as some ground rules for how we're going to be together in this gathering. Um, and we have some, some ideas for that right here. Uh, I'll go through it kind of quickly, high level, I think. Um, then get into a very short presentation about CJAC. So this is like what our charge is, um, which is publicly available. Um, some examples of two to three past or active projects. We thought, let's talk about the budget equity tool, creative discourse work, um, and then something that has, has been more responsive or reactive. Um, I'm not, which kind of predates my my time, so I can't really speak to it. Um, the thing we thought we needed to do here is provide a very clear working definition of what equity justice means, um, something that people can hold on to as they go into the, the later discussions around how their committees might be a, kind of facing um, equity and justice issues. Um, so we, we, we still need that really clear definition. Um, then we're gonna break up into small group conversations or maybe one group conversation, depending on yeah. how many people we have. Um, and this is a time where just really quick introductions um, from everybody about, okay, who are you? What is your committee about? Um, and then kind of kick off with a couple of prompting questions for the discussion. So two questions here kind of related. What equity issues are most relevant to your committee's work? Um, and, or what equity issues is your committee kind of currently engaged in? Um, and that that starts with just kind of two minutes of silent brain writing for everybody to think about before we get into some discussion. Um, after that quick, bit of thinking individually and silently um, then some sharing from everybody to get the discussion going 
And it's really, I think it's about building a shared understanding of where people are at with respect to justice and equity um, from their committee perspectives. Um, I think then there's the moment of, okay, some issues maybe come up, but I think the discussion, things will emerge like, oh, we haven't thought about access or we haven't thought about, um, you know, who we're not talking to um, when we're focused on what the work we do. So um, I think there's gonna be some, some note taking will need to happen um, by us facilitators of those small groups, just to kind of make sure we're hearing the key points. Um, and then get everybody back together um, as a full group um, and not necessarily do a kind of march around the table report out, but invite people to share anything that was noteworthy from their small group discussions. And this is about, again, building that broader shared understanding of the range of issues that might be um, faced by the committees. Um, I think there's an opportunity there to look for any themes that emerge from what people are, are sharing. Um, and then um, we had the thought that as a, a more concrete example, it might be interesting for one of us to walk through in a little bit more detail um, how the budget equity tool was used by city council and the kinds of things that came up. Um, just to, a little bit more detail about what what the lens of equity and justice could look like in committee work. Um, and I think this is this is more free form discussion too. So um, capturing that would be really important. Uh, and then really that takes us to the end and kind of closing it out. Um, and I don't know if we want to leave people with next steps. Um, so that's something to, to answer as well, as well as like what our, what our offering is as a resource to everybody. Um, so I'll let you sit with that for a second if you want and see what questions or thoughts come up. I mean, a couple of quick reactions. I think it's it sounds great. I I think it. I love the like giving some space for people to just like take it in and then think about their committee and then and then have a chance to kind of hear other people as they're thinking through like how other committees because it might spark some different thinking um, for their own committees. One, I guess we should like think about that sec the like before the closing, if it is a small group, how would that be different if it's like further time for reflection or like going deeper into some things or how we think about that if it ends up not being a small to a full group discussion, but a deepening of the full group <laughs> discussion um, or if there's something else we could get out of it or maybe it just ends up being a little shorter or something if there feels like there's a <clears throat> so I don't know if you've thought about that. Um, and then just a couple thoughts on next steps. Like most, although I don't know if, if all, but like most of them I would imagine have some kind of budget piece. And I wonder if we should be like it would be really awesome if each group was using the budget equity tool for whatever you all are asking for in the fiscal year 23 budget, whatever is coming up. Um, and, and that that's something that, you know, if, if this is true and we feel like we have capacity, like that we'd be happy to, like we'd love to see those and like help put that into, um, you know, and or like major projects that they're considering to, to use the tool and think through, or like if they're deciding between priorities or something like, like mm -hmm. that, that would be a way to really, you know, I just think like the more it's like, here's a tangible thing and a way mm -hmm. you can think about it. Like they're probably more likely to actually do it. And yeah. Um, and then it would make it easier for us to provide input or like, 
reflect with them if, if it's around something specific. Um, like maybe it's like in the, in the fall when we're getting to budget priority setting season, like we'd love to revisit with you or like we'd love you to send us what you've captured for priorities or um, things that have budget implications. Um, so maybe that's like a natural follow-up point or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like that a lot. Yeah. <clears throat> My, my sense was like Cameron was planning to embed this more in like the departments and stuff anyway. So I think mm -hmm. I could see whoever like staffs each of the committees, like hopefully that would be part of it, but like them mm -hmm. getting this overview to like better understand why and how it can be used and useful and um, And that there's a group like this that could like help if they feel like they're stuck on how to think through something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. Um, I, I didn't quite understand your first comment about the small group to the full group. Were you were you suggesting that we might want more small group time for kind of reflecting on the issues before? Oh, sorry. Back out to the full? No, I was just if it ends up being just a small group where you're all together, so the small group discussion ends up actually being a full group discussion, just given the low turnout so far. So if it's only like five people and we're all together and we've got a small group conversation, it just be, would be good to think about like, is there a next phase then as a group all together? Or is there like, would it be worth even in that small of a group to have people pair off for a few minutes? Or I don't know, just, just knowing how late it is and that we might have slow turnout just yeah. to, to have a plan ahead of time if it ends up just being a small group that you're all together. Got like it. That, Got what it. that second half hour would be. Does that okay. make more sense? Yeah, yeah, thanks. And I think the answer to that is we just, we may, you know, dig, ask those follow-up questions, go deeper, ask, do the digging on the things that seem like they are the most salient and end a little early, right? Is that? Yeah, I I don't ever feel like because you schedule something for a certain yeah. amount of time, you need to take that time if it's not um, necessary. So it could be, it could be that there's more time with what you're saying, Lauren, about um, conversation around the budget equity tool and kind of walking them through like, okay, tell me how, how do you think you could use this in your committee work? And we could hear from everybody in that case, probably. Mm -hmm. um, so just getting a little bit more specific. Yeah. And I, I thought the tool worked well too for um, thinking through the policy proposal <coughs> coming forward with the ordinance change or even if it's not that formal, but there's some decision they're making or the proposal mm -hmm. they're putting forward. There might be, I mean, they could have a big grant proposal or something and not, and like, thinking about how you would shape your project to, I, I think the structure of it works well to just get you thinking through different, different kinds of people and how they might be impacted and different kinds of considerations for how to make sure it's gonna work for the community. Mm -hmm. Well, and that's also where like, I think we, uh, Jeremy, we like 
started talking about this, but then never kind of circled back of just, are, are these the right prompt questions? Are we like going to get stuck in, you know, what are, what are equity issues um, and, and things like that. And, you know, if, our, if our, if our goal is to collaborate with city committees to support them in centering the experiences of oppressed groups as they consider policy and decisions regarding city operations, like, not that that's necessary, you know, what is our language or our goal? Um, but like, are, yeah, are these, are these the, the right initial prompt questions to, to get to those? Yeah. All right. What equity issues? You know, I don't know. Do you see or like is equity issues? I just I'm getting stuck here and I yeah. don't know. <laughs> I don't have any solutions right now. Um let me let me just maybe. Yeah, I almost wonder if there's like a if depending on where people are starting, if like you could almost see starting with one person and their group and like if they're like I'm I'm not really sure and like I haven't spent a lot of time thinking about this for my committee and then like is there are there a couple questions to start like peeling back like okay like like what's an example of a big project you're working on and then like yeah. how do we think about the equity implications of that project and like what kinds of issues might you be thinking about like if there's like a couple probing questions or something that would get us to to this if people are wrestling a little bit with like what what we mean right so I'm, like start with these prompt initial prompt questions and then just for facilitation facilitators have a few like follow-ups ready to go is that I'm just throwing stuff out here, but yeah. Okay, and then for justice equity, um, I mean, I was thinking of just like, let me see if I can do this. Throwing in, you know, something like that type of thing. Mm -hmm. um, Do you mind sharing that in the chat? Yeah, yeah. So that should we should we assign roles here too to send out? Is that another next step here? Of who will go over what content? Yeah, I think that's I mean are we just gonna assume the other committee folks can attend and uh, assign folks, yeah. <laughs> Ball and tell them. them. <laughs> facilitators of the small groups. I think so, yeah. Yeah. And potentially like other roles here too. Yeah. Yeah. Of like, I don't know, like Michael's been around the longest. So like have him review the charge language or or have Lauren do that as a city councilor or something. So yeah. Maybe we can start from the top. Okay. 
who should like MC and do the goals and the agenda and the rules, and the ground rules. Um, I mean, I'm I'm happy to do any yeah. any type of role. Um, so you you, you kind of tell me, you know, like where you want to be, and and I'll be where you're not. Like, <laughs> <laughs> is that great to have you kind of like offer offer the the, the grounding of the space? Well, cool. yeah, I can do that. And then Lauren, would you want to do like the about C Jack piece? Just like the, how we came to be in the charge, like as a city councilor, does that make sense? Yeah, I'm happy to do that. And then examples, Jeremy, I think it makes sense for you to do the budget equity tool. Okay. Right? I sure. can do creative discourse. Yep. And um, yeah, maybe Mike. Michael mm -hmm. from the mm -hmm. for the responsive thing. And then I can do the like definition Great. piece. And then I can do the tech for moving us into small groups, but would you, Jeremy, would you want to just like launch us into the small groups with like instructions? Yeah, I can, I can set up like the structure of the exercise and prompts and all that. Great. And then facilitating a large group discussion or large group discussion, depending on how it goes. <laughs> um, so here, here's something yeah. I thought of, um, which might help us. So I was wondering if for this, larger group discussion we wanted some kind of visual note taking as a screen share which is something i can do but not easy to do and facilitate at the same time so if that's something we need want i could do that kind of visual capture thing and shane if you could handle the the group discussion facilitation that could work Great. Okay. And then I thought there was a Miro board link on here. Are you still thinking of, of doing that? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Just, okay. yeah. That's how I was thinking I would do it. Great. And then closing. I, mean, I think this will probably be a little bit wishy-washy, but I think it'll be good to have one person like drive that forward. And so maybe Jeremy, if you're doing that like visual capture, can you just be like, all right, let's like bring forward the big things that have been coming up. Sure. Um, and and the thank you and next steps, I guess too. Yeah, that's fine. Great. Mm -hmm. That was easy. A sign, a sign, a sign. Mm -hmm. um okay and so then going back up to the top here uh so we need to confirm people for their roles and then um so documenting discussions should we just do that in a doc in like in a document in a or are you thinking of doing that on Miro too for the small groups um no, I think in the small groups, it's just however people want to take some notes, they should just take some notes. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Mm -hmm. Have people record on local devices. And then before getting to this real quick, I'm just do we want to have like a PowerPoint with like the goals and agenda and rules and or you know, some sort of visual? Would that be, yeah, I, would that I be think helpful? I think that's always helpful. Great. Great. Um, okay, and so then for interrupting microaggressions, I think this will maybe just go into the like small group conversation piece of, I mean, there's, 
not many more of us to be checked in with, but I feel like that does like make sense just to recognize, like be prepared and recognize to, to, and to name, to say, Ooh, I'm not sure. Can you want to try rephrasing that, that, that hit wrong to me or um, mm -hmm. something like that. Um, just, just always a good practice too. Do you have Shana on that kind of any like go to phrases or statements or questions that help yeah. do that? Just so we, I think it would be great to have handy. It's not something I'm well practiced at. We probably, and my work, we check in on it and practice like and mm -hmm. are like actively mm -hmm. finessing it like probably once a month <laughs> it's just <Yeah>. like <laughs> um so let me see if i can just like copy and paste something real quick let's put it down here at the bottom like Nice. Thank you. I don't know why the oh, because it's in. Thank you. Cool. Okay. Um, all right. So making the PowerPoint, checking with Mary, um, confirm with staff, with staff, with committee members. <laughs> um, I feel pretty good about this. It's gonna be great. If if we get people to come, it's gonna be great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Part of our our to do. Yeah. I think it looks great. Lauren, should I hand it over to you for tonight? Tonight's stuff? Yes. Let me just, I was trying to hydrate. I have my second vaccine shot in a few minutes. So. Oh, hey. Hey. I, haven't had, I haven't had breakfast yet. I've only had coffee. This is probably oh, not the ideal, <laughs> the <laughs> ideal way to head into it. Um, so yeah, let me pull up. Um, so after our discussion last week and then, um, or like last meeting and the last city council meeting and some of the input that um, some community members have had about the energy ordinance, um, I was, I had offered as you both remember to, to try to use our tool to like think through some different um, community members that might be impacted in different ways. So I had taken a stab at using just that format from the um, budget tool. I don't know if um, maybe I could share my screen and we could just quickly walk through it and would love, or if you guys have had a chance to read it, which you might have, um, we could just talk about if you feel like there's um, what jumps out at you and if anything seems missing um, or miss characterized here that I could fix. Um, I, I like Michael had gotten back to me and his, 
he said like the biggest question in his mind is, is this going to have an impact on home prices? And then it like, if it does, then that has potential implications. It's very unclear from the, what I've been able to find, like the, there's, there's like a Department of Energy study that said people mm -hmm. who provide this, their home price goes up a little bit, whether or not their home is more efficient, just providing mm -hmm. the information, but that was compared to homes that don't have it. So if our whole community has it, like it, it's been hard to find any kind of like apple to apple yeah. comparison or good data on this. So the researchers we've been working with are like, it, they don't actually anticipate a big change in home price because of it. Like, especially mm -hmm. compared to the changes in home prices we've seen where like the median price in Montpelier jumped like $80,000 over the last year from COVID demand. Right. Um, so, and, and actually there isn't evidence that a home, which is unfortunate for, from a climate perspective perhaps, but like there's not evidence that a more efficient home actually sells for more. Mm -hmm. um, so that was like the biggest question mark that Michael had that I feel like I've been wrestling with a little is like, cause that, that has implications like I think for buyers, for sellers, for <laughs> like it's it's compl complex. It's not like a clear, like, oh, that's just a problem. It's like, well, there's, we have an affordable housing problem. Like, mm -hmm. so access to buying homes is one thing, like obviously for the seller, if they get more money, I guess that's a good thing, but um, for them, but, um, but anyway, that was like the one thing that I feel like is not captured well in here that mm -hmm. he had mm -hmm. pointed out and I've been trying to get better data on and um, uh, that's basically the status. Mm -hmm. So what else jumped out to you all? Um, and like my hope is to um, at council tonight to like share a couple of high level considerations about like that jump out at this with council. And so if like anything to you is like, oh, the, these seem like the biggest mm -hmm. issues that you all should be wrestling with or ways you should think about it or concerns to flag or possible benefits or whatever. I guess mm -hmm. I, I would love to hear that. Yeah, I, I had a chance to look at it and um, it felt really great to see the tool being used in this way. Um, and I think even if you don't have, even if you do not have all of the things in it. I think it's a really good structure for the conversation for people to locate concerns, whether their impacts are positive or negative. Um, you know, there's, there's actually, it just occurred to me, there is one kind of like larger impact here that I don't know where it fits in the tool, which is about you know, addressing climate change, right? And like the benefit of that is hard to calculate um, perhaps, but, you know, by taking steps to mitigate our impact on the planet, we are taking care of ourselves as a community in that way. So that's, in some ways that gets lost in the details of, you know, kind of, um, the various stakeholders and the kind of micro and well not micro but the, the smaller impact so there there's this larger frame um that I, I think needs to always be um kind of made visible here too um i'm not sure if it goes in the tool or not i mean maybe it is somewhere in i think the yeah i'm putting like a little bit of that in the young people and like young people would benefit from communities taking climate action as a generation that will live in the most harmful impacts of a changing climate but yeah you're totally yeah it's like these example we're talking about like marginalized populations for consideration but like what what about the, like the broader you know like e the ecosystem that that is existing within yeah and you know um, to that too, Shannon, we know that people feel the impacts of climate change differently depending on their socioeconomic status or right. other identities. So, yeah, or in identities outside of Montpelier. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. like this, it's a net, 
you know, you think of long-term horizon, like in larger scales of systems, like this is um, an important step, I think, for those larger impacts. But, Got that, Lauren? Good to go? Yeah. <laughs> so, no, that's a really- totally change it. <laughs> that's, that's great. It, it, I mean, I think that's like a, a good flag for, for this, but then just more broadly, because it is easy to get into like, let me think of like the very specifics around the situation and like, how do you make sure that this tool is continuing to capture like big picture goals, benefits, um, you know, or problems or whatever that like might be part of a policy and mm. like not, make sure you're not just so like in the weeds that those, that there have to be ways to capture those, but you could kind of put it like each yeah. category, acknowledge some of the big what you know, like what are, you know, like you said, like lower income people are hurt first and worst by climate change. Like, is that captured right. here? Like mm -hmm. we've got like the young people, but like, um, you know, so. Can I just edit this? Yes, to, please yeah. do. Yeah, it's making me, although not every issue is going to be like this one, but it's it's making me think about a, a version two of this. Um, I'm just thinking about, I don't know if either of you are familiar with some of the theory of change frameworks where, you know, you really, you look, to the long-term change that you want to see as kind of the anchor of like why we're even engaged in this kind of stuff. And then you can kind of from there cast down and cascade down into the more detailed um, like steps, stakeholders, impacts. Yeah. Yeah, I could see like at the top, it's like, mm -hmm a way to capture like the big picture stuff and then go into like the more micro implications and potential mitigation. Mm -hmm. I found it really helpful to, to use this and have a framework to think through and there were like, you know, like we had talked about the need for city help, but just like crystallizing a little more, like what kind of community members might actually need that help? And, you know, it's like people without reliable internet access, people who might not have the computer skills to do because it's an online tool. Mm -hmm. And so like, are we, you know, crystal clear with the community on like what exactly is available to help every single person? who might need to use this at some point to be able to mm -hmm. successfully navigate it and do it. Mm -hmm. um, Just out of curiosity, because I feel like I'm like so in the weeds on the policy. Like if you were like, okay, I was gonna say like three of like the most like biggest equity issues that jumped out or like what what ones to you looking at this with relatively fresh eyes were like, I would wanna make sure that council and you know, whatever community members are participating in the discussion, like are thinking about x y and z as like the big mm -hmm. some of some of the biggest ones to be wrestling with mm -hmm. um i think this like city making computer access is like that's a really interesting like thing for me writ large and i'm i I think that could be done through the library and I'm curious as you know like I don't know if that needs would there needs to be any change but I'm just like recognizing the importance of computer and internet access for all residents um yeah it just like seems like something to flag um across the board yeah 
yeah and to that too like what what personnel resources are needed to assist people with this um when they need to do the work of complying with the ordinance um yeah. i think making sure there's a robust support there um I think, you know, the, the, one of the leading net positive impacts is this idea of transparency, of dis, you know, disclosure for people so they make good decisions um, for themselves about, you know, how to buy and sell properties. Um, you know, any, any I, I have a hard time arguing against better information and better transparency so that people have what they need to make decisions. So like, that just seems like clearly one of the leading and most important positive impacts of this. Um, the other thing coming up for me is that the issue of affordability and you know, housing access in our community. This is not, in my opinion, this is not the thing that is gonna move that needle either way. Like that is such a larger, there's such a larger set of issues and factors creating this housing shortage um, that are about, you know, market forces and the pandemic and like so many other issues, right? So. Um, I guess I'm getting into some strategy here, but like <laughs> to, to get this conversation away from from that specifically and kind of with a kind of a tunnel, a myopic view of like um, this is the thing that's going to make housing more or less affordable um, or change like access to ha housing in Montpelier. It, um, that seems like you kind of always have to like get people to like thinking bigger scales, bigger systems, because that's what those issues are about. I'm not sure I'm making sense, but. <laughs> yeah, no, that makes total sense. That's well put. I feel, I don't know if I have anything else useful productive to say no, here, was, sorry. Yeah, it was really helpful to hear those the high level. Um, yeah, it's been really interesting. The input has been almost exclusively focused on home sellers and, and the potential burdens on home sellers and like virtually no input on home buyers from a perspective of home buyers, because it's like everyone's like, who's weighing in thinking about like, if or when I sell my house, how is this gonna burden me? Um, and I don't know if it's like, that's an easier thing to think about than like, in the future, I might buy a home. <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> somehow it's been like a very, very yeah. one-sided perspective on it. And like none of the benefits to like for every seller, there's a buyer that now can make a better informed decision. Yeah, and I think like, again, like that perspective, it's not really acknowledging the reality of our housing market. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you'd be lucky if you could buy a house. Yeah. I mean, you, you'd have to like, you'd have to like, I don't know what you would have to do to, to not sell your house now. Um, because it's, yeah. the demand yeah. is so great, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's absurd. <laughs> mm -hmm. I know. 
yeah, maybe we need to get the realtors who generally want this to be voluntary or not exist because it's, you know, it's another hoop that their sellers have to jump through. Mm-hmm. But it's like some of the, yeah, it's like how, how many days are houses staying on the market now? <laughs> how Two? many homes are not selling in Montpelier? Like, really? Mm-hmm. Um, all right. Well, that that's super helpful. And yeah, I mean, if anything like comes to mind before tonight, welcome. But appreciate the input and chance to be able to talk with you guys about it. Good luck tonight. Yeah. yeah. So is the vote happening tonight or yeah? Well, no. it could. Okay. I mean, it's possible that it's the second public hearing, which is usually when we vote on things, but sometimes if we want to get more, or may, it may even be the third. Um, but, you know, if there's still ongoing questions or whatever, we might continue working on it. But, um, but yeah, it, we might vote tonight. We'll have to see how the <laughs> how the discussion goes. So, oh yeah. Yeah, good luck. Thanks. All right. All right. Is there anything else on? I think that's it. I will, yeah, yeah we want to wrap up and see you guys next Wednesday evening. And then um, keep an eye out for Monday on the 24th getting the draft report and then um, to discuss on the morning of Wednesday the 26th. (laughs) Sorry, that was a lot of numbers. That was not that helpful, but I will put it in an email as well. (laughs) Got it. Sounds great. Mm -hmm. It's exciting. Yeah, here we go. Yay. All right. Oh, Have and the, day. Shana, and oh, you'll yeah. just like, you'll be, depending on RSVPs, like, we'll just stay in touch through email if it seems yeah. like reschedule, if we don't hit some kind of critical mass. Um, yeah. And otherwise, we'll just, even if it's a small group, it could be a test run. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Cool. cool. Thanks so much. All right, thanks. Thank you. Have See a good y'all. day. See y'all. You too. Bye.